Reese, it's Washington State's annual Seattle game, a four and a half hour drive away from the Palouse for Cougar football. Their invited guests for their annual big city visit, the powerful Stanford Cardinal. 3 0, trying to stay the course towards the title. It's year number two for Mike Leach and his master plan to build Washington State back up. This is a major test for the Cougs, but they're confidently playing well and prime for number five. We welcome you to ESPN's college football finale. From CenturyLink Field, home to the NFL's unbeaten Seahawks, and tonight home to a Washington State team, which has won three straight. They're taking on the number five team in the country, the Stanford Cardinal. As we say good evening, everybody. Glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Matt Millen as we round off a really great day of college football. Hopefully, we'll have a good one to bring it all home for you here in Seattle. It's interesting when you cover Stanford all of a sudden we focus on the offense because all of a sudden college football with all the up tempo spread pass happy yep. offenses has gone so far to one extreme that it's Stanford who seems exotic on offense with these big packages in the power run game. They're the outlier and going back old school and all they do is they try to put as many big rear ends in front of you as you can and just give you power football and you'll see four sometimes five offensive linemen in there and they don't care if you know that they're going to run it they're going to run it right at you now eventually Tess, they're going to come out of this thing with a play action pass off this just a few weeks ago with a boot with Hogan just a little bit of a wrinkle I'll expect tonight if we get that big elephant package I won't be surprised if we see a play action pass out of it. a lot of 300 pound guys wearing tight end numbers as eligible receivers exactly. we'll see them in the backfield we'll see them lined up with three tight end sets as for Washington State well what you'd expect with Mike Leach's air raid offense well quick passing and they want to get rid of the ball fast and they want to spread you out and they want to make you defensively to have to be able to make an athletic play look at this 1.1 seconds the ball is out of the quarterback's hand and he wants to give him some green to work with you're going to see it a lot what they want you to be able to do is start tightening up your coverage and then he's going to take a shot like this down the field they get the numbers all inside up at the line of scrimmage then they spread you out again and then they run at it so it's calculated and it's fun oh, but here's the secret with Washington State you think offense when you think leech this defense is stout up front oh, yeah. they're good in the back end held Stanford to 120 yards rushing last year and in the three wins this year they've only given up 17 total points they're quick they're big they're quick and they're physical and they're down front seven they're going to give the Stanford all the money. Uh, they're going to give them a run for their money here, Tess. Trust me. That's a Stanford team, though. The second longest win streak in college football right now. 11 straight for the Cardinal. The Rose Bowl champs aiming for another special season. Kickoff when we return to Seattle. A look at Pike Place Market and Pike Place Fish Market not far away from CenturyLink Field. Here in Seattle, where Stanford has come to town and they're not at full strength. Maria, Maria Taylor has more. Maria? That's right, Tess. Depth will be a key today for Stanford. Their starting left guard, David Yankee, is out sitting to a personal family matter. He'll be replaced by Joshua Garnett, who's received all the first team snaps this week of practice. Also, Barry Browning did not travel. And then Ed Reynolds, the starting safety, will have to sit out the first half due to a targeting penalty from last week. And he'll be replaced by Devin Cunningham, and he will come in and probably play corner after Ed Reynolds returns to the game. Ed Reynolds, so talented, got tagged with that new targeting rule last week. So out for the first half tonight. Stanford won the toss and they have chosen to receive. Ed Reynolds looks like his dad first played up in New England for years as a linebacker. Good player. They'll Jackson. miss his presence in the first half. Jackson Cummings is number 23. Ty Montgomery number seven is Mike Bowen. Is set to kick away here in the annual Seattle game for Washington State. Played them tough a year ago. Stanford won it 24 17. It was 10 10 at the half. 
We understand the officials right now as you see coaching staff pointing up to the clock. They were trying to reset the clock here in the stadium as it reads triple zeros for now and Bolin patiently waits as he goes and marks off his steps again. Tess what a great day in college football huh? Sure was. So what West Virginia was able to do in their upset of Oklahoma State LSU and Georgia was an absolute thriller and did the Alabama defense make a statement against Ole Miss and Bo Wallace who uh, got a little quote happy with the press this week. Mr. Yeah, big Miller. mistake big mistake. And this is our finale to what was a fun and entertaining day as we are underway in Seattle. And this will be Montgomery. And Ty Montgomery fights his way out to the 28 where he's tackled by Marcus Mason. David Shaw's third year as Stanford's head coach, Pac-12 coach of the year the last two seasons. Shaw sends out Kevin Hogan, who is unbeaten, 8-0. As a starting quarterback with that real nice notch on the belt, a Rose Bowl victory. That sounds good, doesn't it? Open up the game with a pass, a strike downfield, and just off the fingertips of a striding Ty Montgomery. And he was wide open test and it didn't take him long to get right after Nolan Washington. Of course Hogan took over last year when Josh Nunez struggled as they were searching for Andrew Luck's replacement. You never want to be the man trying to follow the man and that was the case with Nunez but Hogan came in steadied the ship back half of the season. Clock operator please set the clock for 1440. The clock will start on the snap. 1440. Terry Light and our Pac-12 referee heading up this crew is tending to those early clock issues here at CenturyLink Field. Going to run on second and ten with Gaffney. Tyler Gaffney working his way out to the 34 yard line where he's brought down by Iwani Nauta. Tyler Gaffney, real interesting story as he returned to Stanford football after a stint with a minor league baseball team. You heard our Maria Taylor telling you about David Yankee being out, their All American guard at the left side. Josh Garnett is taking his spot. He'll make a difference being out of there. Third and three. Hogan passing out of the gun. They pick up the pressure. He's going to take a strike downfield again. And this time he's able to connect with Michael Rector. Inside the 20 yard line for the Cardinal. Well, this is DeMonte Horton. And he just gets to the inside. Horton tries to close on the thing, but. Two things have happened here early already. Rector is able to get deep down the field. That's a long developing throw. What that tells you is that offensive line gave him a lot of time to throw. Just the second catch of the year for Rector, the sophomore. It goes for 48 yards. His first catch of the year went for a touchdown. Big play Mike there. That was pass play of the season for Stanford. Play action as the whistle comes in. Before the snap delay of game against the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, we had the clock issues early, but that play clock is dead center right in front of Kevin Hogan as he was looking down the field. So no issue there. It's Mike Leach, in his second year at Washington State, says, hey, we just flat out play harder this year. And they've gotten the early results, had the win at USC in week two. Defense playing much better than many would expect. Backs him up to a first and 15. Gaffney. And Gaffney was first met by Daryl Monroe, and Taylor Taliulu also came in. 
because when you watch this Washington State defense, they give you a lot of movement. And so there's a lot of stunts and a lot of slants and a lot of crosses up, up in front. Sometimes what happens, it's almost a feast or famine type of defense. You may catch somebody for a one-yard loss or a one-yard game, and then they may bang one on you for about eight to ten or something like that. So you have to be patient. They're going to get their pluses. They're going to get their minuses. Jackson Cummings now in on second and 13, flaking Kevin Hogan as the back. And they go with the underneath option that time, but it was read well. That was Xavier Cooper staying right with Cummings. Yeah, and see, they brought a blitz. They brought a blitz that time. And they dropped it down from the outside. Cooper, 96, he ends up making the play. But you can see top of the screen coming right there. Cooper ends up being the beneficiary of a strong safety coming down from the top side. They have they have good size up front. What they don't really have here is a pass rusher. They use it on third and 11. Late clock down to three. Now once again, the officials running First in out. as we get a Stanford. timeout being called by Stanford. Washington State's playing them in the zone. Means they're going to try to keep everything in front of that 10-yard mark. Empty set for Kevin Hogan. And Hogan on third and 11. This gets to the 11-yard line as Tiam Buchanan was able to chop him down. I don't quite, I don't, that one I don't see. They, under, they, they tried to spread everybody out, but he should have recognized that it wasn't man-to-man. -man. They had everybody back inside. When you're not manned up, backs aren't going to be turned. That's not the right time to run that quarterback draw. Jordan Williamson is 3-for-3 three three inside 40 this year. This from 28. Senior kicker gets Stanford on the board to begin the night. Off to a 3-0 start for the fourth straight year. That's the Seattle Aquarium located on the waterfront in downtown Seattle. It's a little educational as well. I love that stuff when it's there's fried some, up. Some bait. There's some bait right there. <laughs> Cute little one. As this is the Seattle game, 11th time that Washington State has put forth this annual contest here at the home of the Seahawks, Century Link. Stanford up 3 0 early on. As Williamson kicks away, Dalvin and Caldwell back, and this will go for a touchback as Caldwell fields it there. Let's go back to that third down play. Yeah. Curious call. Third and 11, yeah, because here's where he comes out and he sees he sees all these guys back here and all the eyeballs are back inside because they're in a zone. And they're looking, they're looking at the quarterback and feeling their receivers. When the quarterback comes to the line of scrimmage, he notices that it's not man-to-man. -man. This is not the right play to run against the zone because you're, as soon as they declare it run, everybody's going to converge on it. That was Kevin Hogan on that third and 11 as they settled for the field goal. So they had that 48 yard completion to get them in position. Now, Connor Halliday and Washington State's offense is counter to everything you will see from Stanford as they open up with a screen to Gabe Marks. Now, Connor Halliday, this is his team now, was splitting time last year with Jeff Toole. Opened the year with 65 pass attempts. Down there at Auburn, threw for 344 yards, and he has had some big stat lines over the course of the past couple years for the Cougs. Up tempo, and they will air it out. They swing it out of the backfield this time. It's Marcus Mason for a first down for Washington State. Because that's nothing more than a long handoff. And when you do that, you really have to be able to block with your wide receivers. This is a spread offense. I mean, at its finest. They're trying to spread you defensively. Washington State knows that Stanford has better defensive personnel than they do. So to neutralize that, they spread it and put their athletes on their athletes in space. 
Halliday again trying to extend the play. The ball came loose there, and that. Mason jumped on it. Boy, he was right on top of that as it was Josh Morrow who came charging in against Connor Halliday. This is one of the things that Washington State was leery of. They know they don't match up well against that defensive front of Stanford. They believe that Stanford is a more physical group and can get after them physically. They proved it there. Well, they proved it last year, too, when Stanford had 10 sacks against Washington State. Second and 22 now backed up. Quickly getting rid of it, but he threw it behind the intended target, Dom Williams, as he was covered by Wayne Lyons. Now, if they can get any kind of protection, just a little bit of protection, when the ball's coming out quick right now, as you see, you're going to get a double move. And the double move is going, because they're getting rid of the ball so fast, these corners are going to start to bite hard. Safeties are playing a little bit tighter. They, they'll set them up for a double move. Remember Stanford playing without their star free safety, Ed Reynolds, who has to sit this first half after the targeting foul last week. Third and 22. And a strike right over the middle to Craycraft. First down. He and he's right at the sticks. Oh, he put It'll depend sword. on that spot. Now I can look at right. He's right in front of me. He Remember, that yellow sword. line is unofficial. And they're going to ask for a measurement. But that was a good strike, Halliday to River Craycraft. How about that spot, Tess? From where I'm, I'm standing right in, directly in line, and that receiver is got further ahead than what this, where they spotted it. Now keep in mind, it's where the ball is, not the body. Oh, he's about, he's about an inch short. And the guy who spotted it was the side judge, and he was running up the field. No, trying to, be to stay able with to the play. It. Yeah. So they mark him just short, fourth and inches. Yeah, I, I don't like this right here in short yardage situations. When your quarterback, you should get under center. From their own 45, fourth and inches. And they're going to pass out of it. I, I, I and there's don't. a flag that comes in as Lions had coverage on Williams. Pass interference. Number two of the defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Fourth and inches out of the shotgun passing is Mike Leach, and they come up with a P.I. to advance it. Yeah, they get this thing. I don't like this at all. Lions, you can see. Hand. Yeah, he has that left hand wrapped around him, but in a short yardage situation, you still, you got you to get up under center. You got an inch to make. The screen to the top there, and Thompson is able to get a gain of about three, tackled by Morrow. John Thompson, walk-on receiver for the reception here early. Mason and Caldwell both in the backfield here in second and seven. Halliday. Out of the backfield is Mason, and he lowers the pads for a first down, Washington State. Test that, that was the best that Halliday looked right there. They had, they had time to throw, and that allowed him to go through his progression. And he went from left to right and found Mason out in the, out in the flat. Halliday 5 and 6 to open up his night. And another quick strike and spinning for a first down is Craycraft. That might be the best read he had all night. Boy, He's, did he get it out quick there. Well, because the blitz, he saw the blitz coming off the right side right away. And when you do that, you throw it into that. There's your hot read. Watch the blitz come from the right side. You can see, and he knows right away. Boom, go right to it. That's really well done by Halliday. Freshman Craycraft. 
good looking target for Halliday this season. First down now. Once again, out of the backfield is Mason. But this time, he was wrapped up by a man. The difference in Halliday this year as opposed to a year ago is he's way more patient. And he's not afraid to take the underneath thing instead of trying to push the ball down the field, which he loves to do. He has the patience now to dump it off underneath. underneath. Maybe Mason picks up four or five yards, and you live for another down. Second and eight. And it's underneath, right in the middle of the field that time for Ricky Galvin. And it'll be third and a long two. That's smart. He is playing really smart. This is the quintessential Rick Leach offense. Take what the defense gives you. Sit down in the hole in the inside. They're not going to run the ball much all night. They know they physically don't match up with that. But when the numbers start to show, when they start backing off and trying to move people to the outside, that's when you might get a couple more runs. Six straight completions for Connor Halliday. Third and two now. And that was thrown just a little too much to the inside for Christoph Williams. And that one's on Halliday. We don't want that one back. That was, he missed him. Fourth down, they're all out. Remember, all they went for it on fourth and inches yeah. from their own side of the field. Here facing a fourth and two with the ball at the 19 yard line. And remember who's not there in the middle of that Stanford defense, Ed Reynolds. A big, strong, free safety. They're matched up tight, though. Safeties are back deep. And Washington State First is going to use timeout, a timeout. Washington State. Fourth and two on for Washington State when we return to Seattle. Stay with us. Well, after the timeout, Mike Leach making a decision facing that fourth and two. Send Andrew Fernie, the senior talented kicker out there, attempt the 36 yarder off to a great start this year. A perfect four for four. Great rotation right down the middle and true. As we've got a tie game here between Stanford and Washington State. A lot of elements tests for a good kick. Maybe one of the most important is the hold. Watch how he gets those laces away from the from the from the strike of the kicker. Laces out, says Austin Apodaca, the backup quarterback and the holder for Andrew Fernie, and it worked well. Russell Wilson playing well, their defense playing well, and this stadium just absolutely rocks, just like the old the old kingdom up here it was the same thing that place was gets so loud and they say this place is even louder we're at the Texans on Sunday and we're glad to have their home for a night of college football here's Ty Montgomery from the end zone and he was met hard at about the 20 yard line by Jeremiah Allison see Kevin Hogan and that Stanford offense again going up against Mike Bresky's defense the defensive coordinator at Washington State coming off a shutout of Idaho and everybody thinks a Mike Leach team is all offense this Washington State Cougars team will turn things around defensively in short order in the past year and a half. There's Gaffney bottled up against that front of the Cougars. Big Xavier Cooper in that front three for the Cougars. And he gave up a yard that time to Gaffney. Second and nine, empty set for Hogan out of the gun. And as they get push again, and Hogan takes off, and Hogan slides down for a Stanford first down. He can run the ball. He can run, and that's a good decision. He recognized the two safeties deep, so they had to cover two. And then the middle backer, the inside backer, he went out and tried to take up Montgomery, 
in the slot. And as soon as he vacated the middle, that's what Hogan saw, and he took right to it. Look, an athlete at 6'4", 228. This is Montgomery looking to get that block out in front. Gets the edge and a good effort by Montgomery as he just stepped out before he had all that green grass ahead of him. Lee Ward provided a block for Montgomery on the outside and it only goes for 11. Could have gone for much more. A little bit of a hold right there and right there is where he got the push and Montgomery with his right foot stepped out of bounds. Montgomery is a guy who does have some speed. And they need to use, they, they really need to uh, take advantage of that speed. They're not a real fast team. He's got speed, muscular receiver, fully healthy this year, dealt with a lot of nagging injuries in the past. So another first down for the Cardinal. They pick up the blitz this time. Hogan now tried to extend the play, went a little too far with it as once again it was Xavier Cooper. Bringing five, so you got a blitz, which means on the outside, you have to start manning up. You can see in the inside, Monroe going out on the top from underneath. And then here he comes. That's a nice job of just pursuit and staying after the guy. Gafton got that first extra man in pass protection, but then Cooper shed his and was able to track Second down Kevin Hogan. And Stanford's going to use their timeout. second timeout already. 3.43 to go. Tie game between these two. There's Mike Bresky. Talked to us the other day. He said, we got to keep Stanford out of third and short. We need to win first and second down. Now they won first down moments ago. Here's Hogan. Looking over his options. And once again, taking a lot of time, and eventually the defense corralling him. That time, Uwani Nauta. The test, the whole key to this, they got pressure, but the coverage down the field did not allow Hogan to be able to make the throw. Watch it on the top side. Just really well done. They tried to double move, but the safety sitting over the top, and then the corner jumps it again. See, here came the safety from the inside out. Sets up this third and long. Nice work by Dale and Buchanan. This is what this is what Bresky wanted. Third and long. Anything over third and four, he was happy with. The spot they want them in. They bring five. It gets picked up. Hogan cranks it up. Downfield and a strike to Kajust. Devin Kajust. Touchdown, Cardinal. 57-yard touchdown pass by Kevin Hogan. Well, Mike Bresky, he rolled the dice a little bit, and he brought the blitz, like you said, Tess. And Kajust has the coverage they want. And watch the protection. Great job by Gaffney with the protection. And then Kajust in the secondary, and he's just too fast for him. In a big spot. Third watch Gaffney. Nine. Isn't that nice, Tess? And he finishes it, too. I like that. As Williamson adds the extra point and a 57 yard strike for a score on third and nine by Hogan to Kajust. Devin Kajus came in averaging 21 and a half yards per catch. He just went for 57. And Matt, he's 6'4", 228, but he considers himself a pure wide receiver. And you see, even that big body, he can stride. That guy can fly down the field. Runs pretty well. He's like a small tight end, really, is what he is. Keep in mind, Stanford's had great success with tight ends, although Kajus is not that. Keandre Caldwell boldly coming out from his own end zone, and he was lit up at about the 16-yard line by Joe Hemscott. Hemscott with a little rude. <laughs> Watch this. That's a great hit. And 
love that stuff over on the bench. Firing off on special teams. Now Halliday back to business. Wide receiver screen. Maley. And Vince Maley trying to turn the corner. He does so out to the 21 yard line, pushed out by Jordan Richards. Tess, you know, he gets rid of that ball so fast. He must have a good sized hand. It's barely in his hand. Barely, and it's gone. I mean, he is, it's getting rid of, he's getting rid of it really fast. Takes that snap from Elliott Bosch. You see number 60 there and just distributes it quickly to either a back or a wide receiver. Second and five now. And that time they try to run on the inside and only going for about a yard that time was Mason brought down by Shane Scove. Oh, Shane Scove, it looks to me like he's getting back to where he was before he originally hurt his knee. He's got his weight down. He's around 242, he says. He's moving a little bit better. He's getting, he's, he's feeling better. I, I think that's as good a player as you're going to find in college football. You get a a, flag there's down a late flag. There's a flag down here thrown right at the 21. Substitution infraction. Number 85 entered the game and did not participate. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That's John Thompson, the receiver. And you know, the guy who's got that Juris Doctorate degree is going to have a friendly conversation with Terry Lydon and the crew. We may sue him before this night's <laughs> over. <laughs> Third and nine. Halliday. Oh, oh, that has to be caught. That was dropped by Isaiah Myers. And that was a perfect throw right between the eights. That ball is coming out fast. And look at, okay, back step, sets right between the eights. That's the first down. It's dropped. Instead, Michael Bolin will come out and punt away. And Cody Whitfield's going to set his feet at the 45 yard line, looking to give Stanford good field position here. Okay. This is a bad punt. Takes a bounce at the 37 and is fielded at the 49. Ended up bouncing for 32. That's the most that he could make out of that. Here's a guy that was on target as well last time out, Kevin Hogan. And that 57 yard touchdown pass to Devin Pajust. Keep it on the ground with Gaffney. And Gaffney able to get five yards there. Just one of the things that Washington State wanted to do was get Stanford in third downs. And when they have gotten them, they've had success. It's been third long, but they've been able to do it. Now, this third and 11, he didn't quite come up with it. But on the big third down last time, it's as good as it gets. Right down the middle for six to produce. Here you see on second and five how they'll load up that backfield with big bodies. And Gaffney will run right behind him, but that hole was filled by Daryl Monroe. That's a good player, Darryl Monroe, number 13. Usually their middle backer, they bring him in a lot of different places. They'll bring him off the edge, they'll bring him up front. You see him right inside. But what they do with him is they'll blitz him quite a bit. Now he's coming regardless. Yeah, he split that double. They were gonna, they were gonna get two to one on him. He split it, got skinny, made a big play, sets up this third down test. And this is, again, where they wanted him to be. We'll go back to that third long. First quarter. Counting down here. Loud crowd for the Seattle game. Place known for loud crowds. Stanford with a 10-3 lead this is the at end the of end the first of quarter. Number five, Stanford. 
up 10 3 to start the second quarter here in Seattle. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, and Maria Taylor. Glad you're with us for this college football finale. Third and six for the Cardinals. Here's Hogan going to try to run for it and he's got it and more as he slides down at the 33 smartly played by Hogan again he sees the coverage and they're running with a the man they came a little bit of pressure see they bring the pressure from the top sides because his own blitz they drop the middle out and he recognizes it on the top takes advantage of the green. Twenty nine rushing yards already tonight for Hogan play action see if he takes a strike and he got will him. and he's got him again Devin produced second touchdown reception this one thirty three yards Kajus just ran right past uh, Nolan Washington number two wasn't even close but this whole thing is set up for one reason and one reason only great protection they came with the blitz look at that outside move Washington never had a shot great protection though up front that offensive line did a good job and Williamson makes it a two touchdown margin yeah let's go back to the touchdown if you're going to be a running back you have to be able to protect and they did a great job. You saw Tyler Gaffney 25 and Ryan Hewitt lined up in the fullback spot. You have to block. You have to identify. They did a fantastic job. And that allowed Kajus to do that double move on the outside. Double moves take a little bit more time. And because of that protection, he was able to get it. What a mismatch problem Devin Kajus represents. And Kevin Hogan, you see him there. Five completions in a row. The last two for touchdowns to his big junior receiver. Ricky Galvin now on the return. And Galvin out to the 24 as a flag comes to penalty was marked off here against Washington State. As that'll back him up to the 14 yard line trailing Stanford by 14 here in Seattle. Halliday once again quickly getting it out and this time he goes to Isaiah Myers. Let's check in with Maria. Before Connor Halliday took to the field, he stopped and talked to Gabe Marks about a specific play. He said, I'm going to get it to you, man, but you have to wait. So a lot of talk about timing here on the sidelines between Halliday and some of his receivers. Halliday right now 10 of 13 for 72 yards. Marks was the freshman standout from a year ago, their leading receiver. See, and they're looking on here on second and four. Pressure up the middle, and there's a good strike downfield for a first down that time as he connects with Christoph Williams. Christoph Williams just running that in, an in cut pattern. You're going to watch it. He's, get, he's still getting rid of the ball fast, Tess. He, I'll tell you, Connor Holiday's throwing the ball really well here tonight. Those windows are small on those in-breaking routes. Halliday's been right on top of it. Second year in Mike Leach's system. You can see how much more comfortable he is. Mason and Caldwell in the backfield with him here on first down. And he will go with Caldwell. And Caldwell gets about three yards that time. Oh, so he was Scove. tackled by Shane Scove. Yeah, Number right on 11. top of it again. Every time test that... Uh, Every time that they've had a chance to be able to run the ball, Scove's been right in the middle of it. He's got, he reads the ball, he reads things extremely well, has very good instincts in the run game. Uh, you mentioned earlier, kind of work his way fully back to speed after that gruesome injury back in 2011. And this is Marks, who Maria just commented on, the relationship that Halliday has with him. So he gets it to the 45 yard line It'll be third and four from there and 
Cougars looking for their first third down conversion of the night. And that ball was bobbled. And it goes incomplete as Bobby Ratliff couldn't control it. Halliday put it in position. Ratliff couldn't get his hands fully wrapped around it. That's just the second time now that Halliday has been dead on. This is there's no excuse for a drop ball. It's a second third down to second drop ball. Halliday's right on the money. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. I they saw this earlier on the side of the field. Took a lot of time too, Tess. They took a lot of time. Remember, they had a fourth and inches that they converted on a pass interference from their own side. And here, it's a fourth and four from their own 45. And they come up with it. That was Dom Williams battling against Wayne Lyons. Now, interestingly, both these teams want to go after number twos on the defense. Wayne Lyons on the top side, you can see him. He's just working at it. That's a nice job by Williams with body position and really attacking the ball. So a first down into Stanford's side of the field for Washington State. And that was just mistimed on the slant that time as he overthrew Craycraft, who ran it a little shallower than he probably thought. He needs Mike to get Leach. his head around, Tess. Yep. Mike Leach's offense trying to deal with the weather conditions tonight. It's been a steady breeze, and we had hard rain earlier that has calmed down just a bit here. Second and ten. Halliday. He's out of the backfield as Mason met right away by Shane Scove. There, there you can see the old Shane Scove. That's coming from the inside out, and that you have to have come uh, good angles. With good speed, and he showed all of them right there. Reminder that Sports Center is starting right now over on ESPN News. They got the top story of LSU, Georgia. That was an SEC instant classic today. So if you want a dose of Sports Center, you can go to ESPN News. Third down and 12. Halliday. Can't escape at that time and just had to throw it away. There's their pass rusher, Tess. That's the one guy that they have is James Vaughters, number nine. He is, he look at, he's going for a pick right there and then he gets held, but he just keeps on coming. He's got very good speed. As soon as I saw him at practice the other day, I thought, now that guy, he's got some juice to it. Mike Boland comes back out. Woodfield sets up at the 10. And that's where he makes the fair catch. And Stanford takes over at the 11 yard line here. Gaffney out of the eye formation. He can't find any room at all. Or Stanford fans would say otherwise. As could juice the target this time again. As he gets it out to the 20, just about a yard short of that first down line. As it was to Quan Brown. Yeah, there's a guy that's just a freshman, 18 years old. Who I really like the way he plays. Now they've they've taken out Nolan Washington. They put the Quan Brown in. That kid. That kid's got some quicks and some good instincts on the outside. I, I like his future. He started against USC and he was part of the effort that helped hold Marquise Lee to just seven catches for 27 yards in that win against the Trojans. The play clock is counting down here on third and one. And they're going to have to use a timeout. David Shaw's last timeout comes with 10:01 before the half. Timeout, Stanford. Beautiful look at Seattle as the ferry comes in from Bainbridge Island. We are at Century Link. Stanford up 17 to three here in the second quarter. Just had to use a timeout. The play clock running down, and facing a third and one. The Washington State crowd. 
trying to help out their defense here. High formation with Gaffney as the tailback. As Hogan checks at the line, and now Kajus splits out. Here's Gaffney. Well, they shot the gap, but I think Gaffney's going to get it here. Depend on the spot. I don't know, Tess. The side, the side judge coming in is... Let's see where he marks it. Yeah, right foot or left foot. They gave it the left foot. And take a look, and it's a first down yeah. for the Cardinal. Cohen coming in right there. Gaffney's, getting the legs of Gaffney. Gaffney motors, man. Gaffney's a tough kid. He, he sure is. Runs with strength, runs behind his pads. Somebody recently asked him to describe his running style. He simply looked at them and said, I like contact. Sums it up. First down throw is incomplete by Hogan. Second and ten now. Flag Once test. again. Delay of game against the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Very uncharacteristic characteristic of this. Now they have Stanford two delayed team, yeah. calls. Exactly. Stanford team is always so buttoned up. It looks like he's going to have his chance on it. Go with Gaffney here, who kept his balance and was able to spin for an extra yard back to the original line of scrimmage before he was met from DeMonte Horton. Still sets up a third and ten. It's where they want him. Mike bresky has been preaching that all week to his Cougars defense. Last Do your time job they, in first and second down. The last time they got him with a double move. The juice is going to be to the top of the screen. Got Horton on the top side. And now Montgomery out there as well. Give you a lot of looks, a lot of shifts. Montgomery and Kajus top of your screen. Play clock down to two. Here's Hogan on third and ten. And this is complete, and it's right at the line to make with Ty Montgomery. Nicely done by Montgomery, knowing exactly where the sticks are and securing the ball. First down for Stanford. Multiple touchdown game last week against the Sun Devils. It's been a big part of their early season success. Five of six on third down conversions for Cardinal. Play action. Freezes him, takes a shot downfield, but he overthrew Rector. Hit him earlier for a 48 yarder, but this time couldn't connect with Michael Rector. He was covered by Buchanan. Tessie went the wrong side. Rector had the whole field to the right of him. He threw it back to the other side. Had he had the, been able to make the right throw, he might still be running. Rector didn't see a lot thrown his way coming into this game, but he's been a good looking target for Hogan early on here against the Cougars. Second and ten now. Gaffney cuts back against the grain. It was a good choice. As he powers his way for a gain of nine yards. I have a feeling Tyler Gaffney is one of those guys who gets better as the day goes on. He looks like a powerful kid. It looks like, like he said, I like contact. Yep. He runs that way. He's got good vision, but he runs through tackles. That's that's the part that I like him. The best part of him, Tess, is in pass protection, he sticks his face right down the middle of a guy. Told you. Spent the past year in the minor leagues playing in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. Here's that tight loaded offensive backfield on third and one. That's an elephant package up front. And they stacked it. They got offensive linemen wearing tight end jerseys and yet that front of Washington State led by Cooper and Palacio and the rest of them 
got right in the mix. And he went pachyderm versus pachyderm on yes, that one. Sure did. <laughs> that's a good job up front. Watch low man wins. And that's exactly what happened. It's a really a nice job. Dylan Bunnell in there at 280 pounds in the backfield. And it is fourth and one. This time, Stanford went and got bigger elephants to come in. They're letting you know right now. Don't be surprised if you see a little play action here. They got a 300 pounder as the fullback who just shifted out. And they're going to try it again. And once again, Washington State comes up, but it's going to depend on that second effort spot. Gaffney reaching out with that second effort, and I think that's going to be good enough. That was all Tyler Gaffney. First down, Stanford. They hit him, Tess, in the backfield. They hit him in the backfield, and he kept on going and ran right through Daryl Monroe. Monroe's a good player. Number 13, watch Monroe. Here they come. Boom. He's stuffed in the backfield. Now watch him run. Keep your legs moving. And then the second effort, right? That's a third effort. That's Monroe fantastic. had him all the way up at the shoulders yeah. and just slid all the way down to his ankles, and that gave Gaffney just enough to reach out. Great individual effort by Gaffney. Play clock again hitting double zeros, but they got it off just in time. And the scrappy Gaffney fighting his way to midfield and a gain of about seven and a half yards. Gaffney's a little deceptive, isn't he? Yeah, he, he has really good feet inside. At that time, it looked like it was all bottled up, and then boom, he picked up another six yards on top of the first uh, four. Watch this. Right, boom, there's the first contact. Now he squeezes through, picks up another five yards on top of him. Did he ever make the most of that? There was not much of an opening there, and he slithered his way through and then showed some pad leverage. Second and three, and once again, it's Gaffney as he's able to keep his balance for yet another first down ridden down by Pole, Tony Pole, the 300 pound defensive tackle. Now this is a Stanford looking drive if ever there was one, isn't it? Yeah, this is you're exactly right, Tess. They're just going to wear you down, go with your play action, force you to have to come get tighter to the line of scrimmage, then he's going to take a shot. And keeping that guy off the field, Connor Halliday in that Air raid, quick strike, up tempo, Mike Leach offense. Here's Hogan now. Look at the time for Kevin Hogan. And a flag comes in as he was looking for his six foot seven tight end, Kamatule, who was covered by Dayon Buchanan. Pass interference. Number 99 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. Kama First Tule. will be repeated. Kamatule is a big man. 6'7", 267 is Luke Kamatule. Well, Dale Buchan Buchanan is no slouch. That guy, he will knock you out. He's oh. not afraid. He's as hard a hitter <laughs> as there is in college football. I'm not sure about that penalty. Uh, Buchanan wasn't going to give up his ground. Kamatule wanted to take the ground. <laughs> it, it was just posting up like being down low in the box in basketball. 6-7 against 6-1 there. Kamatule is going to be a good one. And as you mentioned, Buchanan, one of the hardest hitters in all of college football. First and 25, and they go with a little screen here to Montgomery. And Montgomery almost broke free. You mentioned Buchanan and what he's done through the years. A long history of getting the attention of the officials like back in September of 2010 penalized for the personal foul there and here against Cal oh, bone jarring hit got suspended this against Eastern Washington in September of 2012 and then how about this against Auburn Great I mean just digging in against Corey Grant caused the fumble actually got an unsportsmanlike conduct after the play the hit was solid and legal second and 11. And once again, Kajuice, Kevin Hogan finding Kajuice down to the 31 yard line. And a flag is down back at the 44. So we will check on the penalty flag here. Personal foul, hands to the face. 
Number 95 of the defense. This penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. And Kajus now has four catches for 115 yards. And those two touchdowns, a 57-yarder and a 33-yarder. They haven't had the answer to Kajus here tonight. It's not like he's running away from him. He runs well for a big kid. I mean, he's 230 pounds, 227 or whatever you said. This is Barry Sanders. You heard me right. Look at the moves, just like that. The sophomore running back giving you a glimpse of why so many are so high on his future. He stuck that leg. Boy, did that look familiar, he Matt. Just like Pop. No, no number 20. Watch what he does to Cohen right here. Oh, second Check charge out. timeout, Washington State. Well, he looked exactly like That's amazing to Isn't me. that something? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I thought his dad was the greatest runner in the history of the National Football League. Barry Sanders getting into the game here. A lot of smiles and congratulations over there for Barry Sanders, the son of the 88 Heisman Trophy winner. As he just got in the game moments ago for Stanford, had a really great looking 16 yard reception. Number 26, you see there, son of the all time great. And Stanford in the mix here of a 15 play drive. It's occupied over seven minutes. First down at the 16. Anthony Wilkerson now. And Wilkerson was met at the line of scrimmage by Buchanan. Let's go back and show you the reaction that Sanders got when he came in. It was like a receiving line at a wedding over here. Well, Tess, here's the thing. You know, we were up here getting excited. The sideline saw the exact same thing. And not only that, at practice. He'll make these moves and the guys from the sidelines will get up and they'll start oohing and on because they see the same things that we see. They're excited for this kid. They think he's got a massive future. Big recruit who decided to come out west from Oklahoma City where he was a high school star. Second and nine now. Here's Hogan. Pumps once. Corner of the end zone. And that ball is intercepted by Buchanan. He was looking for Kajus, and Buchanan was on the other end of it. And boy, oh boy, did the Cougars need that. That's more than you know, because Kajus just beat Horton badly on a double move. They pumped, he went top. Horton bit hard, man. Watch, watch down here. He bites like a big dog. Look at his bite. Whoa, he, he was seeing glory in the headlines, but Buchanan came back and made the play because could you this is six well he had a weight on that ball under thrown to Too the much. inside and Buchanan stepped in front Hogan didn't put it to that outside shoulder and it was costly 12th career interception for Dale Buchanan already his third here of this season as there was motion there full start number 76 of the offense five yard penalty still first down the Rob Ryan defense, they are really playing well. And a quick ball getting it out there. Gets a flag as he was looking for Dom Williams. And Wayne Lyons had coverage. Wayne Lyons is a guy that opposing teams will try to pick on. Yeah, and they have been. And this, you know, this. Pass interference, number two of the defense. Yeah. The ball is placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. They had a nice game last week in terms of coming up against the run against Arizona State nine tackles but he tends to be the guys that other teams will test most in the passing game it's Kevin Hogan threw the interception moments ago and now three minutes before the half is Washington State so we're gonna do something here offensively and then as Leon Brooks tracked down by AJ Tarpley that's a great play by Tarpley Tarpley had a man-to-man -man. And you could see Brooks went in motion fast, and Tarpley knew it. So he got on his horse. Watch him. He, he sees it. He knows he's got to get there fast. Watch the angle from inside out. That's really well done. You take away the cutback, and you give him one way to go. Well done, Tarp. Running right down the line, and he's the guy with Trent Murphy and Shane Scove and Vaughters, who you talked about as a pass rusher, that most people think 
doesn't get talked about enough. Second and 11. Here's Halliday. And wide open is Williams. And the Cougars are in business here with 2.17 to go in the half. See him right down here. He's going one on one. He just kind of lulls him to sleep. And Alex Carter, who's normally a good cover guy, he just gets caught sleeping. 43 yard reception brought in by Christoph Williams. That was thrown to the outside of Bobby Ratliff. Carrington on the cover there. This is an interesting offense. Hill. He'll throw short, 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 then boom, he'll take that shot. And sometimes what he does, Tess, is he just, you kind of fall asleep on the outside. If you're not careful, what just happened to Carter happens. Trips to the top. Gabe Marks, their talented sophomore, bottom of your screen. Second and ten. Halliday. Pressure from behind as he tucks and runs and is forced out at the 33 by Tarpley. But a nice job of having the clock in your head. You know something's coming. And on the backside, Scove was after him. Tarpley was after him. He was able to take that and turn it into a third and short, third and manageable. Mike Leach's offense yet to convert a third down tonight. Now facing a third and five. Well, he had a couple of big drops, so that number would be different. Let's see if they can hold on to one here. No flags. Comes in now. Flag did come in. So he takes a shot downfield. And it was a short ball intended that time for John Thompson. He couldn't come up with it. But we will hear from Terry Lydon and his Pac-12 crew. And it should be against Stanford for encroachment. Should be offside, yep. Offside. Number 93 of the defense in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, which results in a first down. That was Trent Murphy with his big six-foot-six six frame coming into that neutral zone. This is the end of the play. And as you saw Thompson getting his neck bent back there. So a first down for Mike Leach's offense at the 28 of Stanford. Looking for Mason on the backfield. And he's pushed out by Murphy right at the line of scrimmage. Minute 41 remaining. Washington State with one timeout remaining. There's the guy that set up this offensive series, Buchanan, who had the interception as Stanford had put together a long drive and Kajus was open in the end zone and Hogan underthrew it to the inside and Buchanan got the pick. Halliday pressured and had to throw it away. That was Gardner coming in with Holiday. Wildly entertaining Saturday of college football. Third and ten. Halliday to the end zone. Those thrown well to the outside of Tom Williams, who was covered by Wayne Lyons. Either Williams ran the wrong route test or Halliday. It was just miscommunication. Well, Andrew Fernie will come out here to attempt the field goal, and he is outstanding with his big leg. As they will place that ball at the 35, making it a 45 yard attempt. 15 of 21 in his career from 40 to 49. Three for three already this year. And yet this strays out to the left. Bad it was snap. a high snap. Tried to get it down, and that didn't help Fernie. We talked earlier about the components of a field goal or an extra point. The, the snap is the first piece that has to be good, and it wasn't. 
He did a nice job of trying to get that ball down, but it disrupted the timing of the kick and caused him to pull it a little bit. Yeah, Apodaca and Fernie, they're well conditioned to getting into that rhythm, but that throws them off just a bit. And with the longer distance, that ball towards the end just leaked out to the left. So a minute 24 remaining here with Stanford back on offense. And Hogan will go underneath to Kamatule. They go with the hurry up. And now they go with a little tempo here, running their two minute stuff is Stanford. And they go with the inside handoff that time for a first down to Gaffney, who just never stops working out to the 45. Remember, no timeouts for Stanford. As David Shaw was upset earlier when they had to use their last one. It was still over 10 minutes remaining in the half when they burned their last time out. Hogan is going to give it to Gaffney. And Gaffney fights his way to get to the sideline with 48 seconds remaining. Good awareness by Gaffney to stop the clock. Well, the wind is going in this direction to the left and in warm-ups Jordan Williamson was good on 50 yard field goal attempts so he would need to get to the 33 yard line to satisfy that range and keep it on the ground again this is Wilkerson now the clock will run down under 40 seconds here with a third down and four Here's Hogan on third down. And that ball was incomplete as he was looking for his favorite target tonight, Devin Pajust. As Cohen came in hard there defensively. He's not getting up. Cyrus Cohen in the 42, after he made that tackle, he just he stayed down. Now the medical staff tending to him and he's able to walk off. Looks like a stinger. I shouldn't speculate, but it had that look after being in the game for so many years, you kind of get a feel for it. And I'm sure you had the feel of it many <laughs> times. <laughs> he's checking the shoulder. That was a missed opportunity moments ago by Washington State after they had stopped Stanford came down the field themselves and came up short field goal attempt went off to the left and Ben Ryan now into punt for Stanford and Leon Brooks with the fair catch at the 11 yard line Stanford offense has a great sense of who they are and that is power run game and then when you get the chance you go downfield to players like the juice yeah and they and they know who they're picking on they know exactly where they want to go with the football and then on the flip side when you had big third downs that you were able to convert they drop passes uh, for Washington State so you know they hurt themselves in some instances and then on, in the other instances uh, Stanford just does what they do well 311 total yards in this first half to Washington State's 139. As the Cougars, and there's typically a move just content to run out the clock, get a good gainer with Marcus Mason. And Halliday will quickly line them up one more time. And get this complete with zeros on the clock to Ricky Galvin. That'll end our first half. Number five team in the country came out steady and consistent. And Hogan and Kajust hooked up with those two first half touchdowns. Six foot four target for Kevin Hogan. Such a matchup problem. Let's get down to the field to Maria Taylor. Coach, you were forced to attempt the field goal after the interception. What did you see from your offense in that drive? I thought we did a good job moving it downfield. We just didn't move. Uh, we didn't finish the drive, and we squandered an opportunity to complete the thing. Didn't run a great route on the outside and had other options. Should have thrown them. 
Well, only one conversion on third down. What's the key to making those plays in the second half? Let's play better. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> Classic Coach Leach. Just play better for Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark May back in the studio for the BMW Halftime Report. ESPN's college football finale up here in Seattle. They like to say the Seattle game for Washington State. They do this once a year. Not working out so well here at Century Link Field with a Stanford defense that's been doing their job. You see the Cougars 0 for 6 on third downs held to 165 yards. Our first half stats are brought to you by Lane's End. Well, if you take a good look at those stats, the one thing you notice is they haven't been able to run the ball or really throw the ball. Shane Scope, number 11, was all over the field in the first half. And then when they went to throw the ball, John Mile, number 90, forces the fumble. And then, not to be outdone, old Tarpley from the inside out, he runs them down too. This has been, this has been characteristic, and those are good examples of what this first half has been for the Stanford defense. They've really shut down this Washington State offense. Washington State will get the ball here to start the second half as the rain comes down here in Seattle. DeAndre Caldwell now on the return for the Cougars, and he is tripped up at about the 16-yard line. It wasn't one of these games, you look at the score, you say, ah, it's still two-possession margin, where Washington State didn't take advantage of opportunities. Stanford just imposed their will. Yeah, they did. And then on top of that, they hurt themselves. Remember, there were some third down conversions where they had them. They dropped the ball. They can't afford to do that. The margin for error here against a Stanford defense is tiny to us. So Connor Holiday and the Washington State offense. See if they can get something going here to open up this second half. A quick strike is complete to Gabe Marks. Let's check in with Maria Taylor. Well, if you expected to see a lot out of the run game for Stanford, David Shaw says he expected to see even more blitzing from Washington State. So they came into this game with a game plan to go downfield a lot. Now they like their matchups. They're going to continue to look at to Kajust and so forth. But he's also excited, guys, to get Ed Reynolds back. He said they need him badly in the secondary here in the second half. Number 29, who had to sit out that first half, as the Cougars pick up the first down with the pass to Caldwell. But Ed Reynolds, a Outstanding veteran leader of that defensive backfield got nabbed with a targeting call last week So he was out for the first half as part of the new penalty in college football for targeting And now he gets to return here to play this second half against Washington State First down out at the 32 Wide receiver screen this time for Williams. As Williams gets out to the 38. Let's show you what happened with Ed Reynolds last week against Arizona State in the fourth quarter as he came in against Taylor Kelly. Well, he knew it as soon as he did it. And it's just targeting. It's kind of a classic target. <laughs> I don't think David Shaw was arguing. He said, I don't know, get him out of here. It's, he was ejected there, and then that stretches into the next half of the next game. Second and four, and coming up with a hit that time was Alex Carter on Leon Brooks. So it'll be third and short for the Cougs. I'm waiting to see something more out of this Washington State offense. And I understand that they, you know, they're having a tough time protect most of the time against against the Stanford defense, but they have not done well at all. You can see 0 for 6 on third down conversions. They should be at least 2 for 6. Here's third and 3. Halliday is trying to find Williams in stride, but he was bracketed by Richard and Lyons. Jordan Richards, the safety number 8, did a really good job of reading that right away and getting over the top. Now it's fourth down. It looks like they're going to they're gonna try it here. Gonna go for it. Well, they convert. They converted earlier on fourth down. Also had a penalty that went their way on another fourth down situation. And this from 
their own 39 yard line fourth and three. What the heck he throwing it there for? There's three defenders on one receiver. I mean that that made absolutely no. That's the first really bad read that he's had all night long. Turnover on downs with the decision by Halliday as he threw it into traffic that time. I mean look at the coverage as they were just a swarm of Stanford defenders around Williams. You got to see before you throw. Part of it's anticipation, but. You got to understand what's in front of you before you throw it in there. So Stanford takes over at the 39 yard line to start this second half. And Anthony Wilkerson is in the I formation as the tailback. And he will get the call here. And he is met in the backfield. This front group for Washington State, that was Destiny Viao. They have done a decent job so far this year. Yeah, Viao's had a good game here tonight. In fact, this front. This down front, Nada inside, has done a nice job. That's a that's a pretty, it's a pretty stout group. Yeah, problem's been in the defensive backfield with the matchup against the six foot four Kajust. Second and eleven now. Here's Montgomery. He puts out the stiff arm, and then lowers the shoulder. As he was able to fight his way near the 35 yard line. But Devin Kajus has been such a factor in this game, the six foot four junior receiver. Well, they've been having success with him mostly because they've had great protection. And then these double moves on the outside just got Washington out of the game. 57 yard touchdown catch 33 yard touchdown catch now at third and seven. Let's see if they look his way here Hogan he was trying to go over the middle on the 10 yard in anticipating Ty Montgomery but it goes incomplete it'll be fourth down. That's a case right there where uh, coach Leach put a lot on his defense and they they came through with it. Put him in. Tough field position. The ball on the 36 yard line. So they will punt away. Williamson, their place kicker, a career long of only 48. That would have been a 53 yard attempt from there. And this takes a bounce at about the five, and Stanford will down it, and Washington State will have their backs up against the wall. They are starting from the seven yard line. Their seventh drive and their best starting position is their own 25. Got away with one moments ago as they turned it over on downs at their 39, and Stanford was unable to get anything. There's pressure as he's able to get it out and able to find Caldwell as he was thrown out by a mana. See the rain coming down here in Seattle. It's been like that all day long. Test if you. Listen to the halftime show. You heard our Mark May talk about a one dimensional offense here with his Washington State team, and really that's what they are. They've rushed for 12 yards. Yeah, they all they can do is throw, and they can't really push the ball deep. So he's trying to get rid of the ball fast and occasionally taking a shot. Second and seven now. Pressure came in on Halliday as he had to launch it up, and that ball is intercepted Jordan Richards a pick six as Halliday is laid out down and hurt in the end zone Trent Murphy came in and blasted Halliday and Jordan Richards cashed in well he just threw a duck up there Watched Trent Murphy from the top, took an inside move and planted him, and that forced a premature throw, and he threw it up high. And that allowed Richards to be able to track the thing. Watch his block at the end. Right? Boom, there. That's Stanford defense. 28 straight games with a takeaway. That is the longest streak in the nation. This one goes for six on the return by Richards.
That is Seattle's great wheel it opened up in June of 2012. A view from the great wheel, 175 feet tall. And it's showing off those colors of Washington State this week. A little crimson and gray for what they call the Seattle game. Once a year, they do this, the 11th time they've done so. That is Austin Apodaca warming up. Number 17 after Connor Holliday, the starting quarterback for Washington State, just took a big hit by Stanford's Trent Murphy on a throw that was picked off and returned by Jordan Richards for a touchdown. For the Cardinal, number five team in the country, up 24 to three. DeAndre Caldwell from the goal line. And Caldwell. Gets out to the 22 yard line. Trent Murphy, 6'6, 261, and coming right into the gut of Holiday. And nice clean hit, just catches him right and looks like he hits his shoulder a little bit. Let's go down to the field to Maria. Yeah, guys, after that hit, Halliday came over and told Leach he was fine, he was totally fine, but he just does not know what in the world happened on that play. So Holiday's gonna trot out there but he stepped into that throw exposed that entire right flank and Trent Murphy came charging in and the one thing was wrong it was a bad throw there's Rufasa the big back now after that reception. throw he's hurting and you see him limping his way to the sideline For that first down throw as Mike Leach will have to turn to Austin Apodaca. Now this this is what you're going to see is the result from that last hit. That's that's from Trent Murphy's hit in the end zone. So the medical staff will get to Holiday as the red shirt freshman Austin Apodaca will come in here. Trailing by 21 against the number five team in the country in that feisty, tough, and powerful defense of Stanford. Second and five. And they go with the inside screen to the slot receiver. That is John Thompson. You see Halliday explaining to the medical staff what happened out there. No contact on that last play, that first down pass. It was what happened prior to that, Trent Murphy, and the lingering effects that he had to deal with here. It's third down and short after the catch by Thompson. Tester still 0 for 7 on third downs. Going to pass here on third and short with Hapadaka. He lofted that up, and it should have been intercepted again by Jordan Richards. And Apodaca is now down in pain as Kevin Anderson came in and just leveled him. So Washington State, in a span of three plays, He's just gone through two quarterbacks. Look at Anderson come in against Apodaca. Well, he was he was not in a good position. And Anderson had already started to make his move to hit him. They're going to be left with either Tyler Brugman or Luke Falk as their quarterback, unless Holloway. Holiday can recover in time here. We'll see what happens when we return to Seattle. That's Washington State starting quarterback Connor Holiday. He was banged up badly when Trent Murphy came in and blasted away on what was a pick six return for Stanford. And moments ago, Austin Apodaca, their backup, also was down and injured. 
as Washington State will be punting away here. And that is off the side of the foot of Mike Bolin. And it does take a bounce past midfield. That might be the worst example of punting I've seen. <laughs> We've seen some through the years. Two, two in a row. I mean, that's not having a good night. 27 yard punt that time. Holiday being brought back to the locker room by the medical staff. He passed for 184 yards tonight. Let's show you what just happened on the last two series for Washington State. Halliday beaten up by Murphy on a pass that would be returned by Jordan Richards. And then on Badaka with Kevin Anderson tracking him down as he threw and took a really big hit from the linebacker. And now Mike Leach has to think through his options a bit, trailing by 21. Meanwhile, Kevin Hogan back to business with Montgomery, who oh. spins and fights for a gain of about nine and a half yards. Pass complete to number seven. This is nicely done by Montgomery at the end, anticipating where the hit's going to come from. Watch, he starts to spin now. Oh, not a number 95. Good hustle down the field at 10 yards, put a nice lick on him. Second and one. Hogan downfield looking for Rector. Oh boy, Stanford is just rolling here in Seattle. It is raining down hard, as is the Cardinal offense on the Cougars defense. This is Taliulu he's going to get to. 30 in the top. Middle of the field is wide open. Taliulu, the classic mistake a defender makes, came right down the middle of Rector, right down the middle. You can't. You cannot do it. See how he froze his feet, Tess? Then he broke to the inside, and it was over. As soon as he stopped his feet, the play was done. Stanford, we're going to stay the course here, step by step, for what could be a special season. See Mike Leach with a full team huddle as he has used a timeout to talk things over with his team as Kevin Hogan just hit a 45 yard touchdown pass to Michael Richter. 100th Rose Bowl game will be played this year and for these two schools you know, a special history linking them to the granddaddy of them all. Like 1902, Stanford playing in the first one. And then 1916, remember the game wasn't played between game one and game two, and it was Washington State who came back in that edition of the Rose Bowl game and beat Brown to finish the season unbeaten and beat them 14 to nothing. There have been some tremendous Rose Bowls over the years, some that I remember as a kid. And one that that guy's never going to forget. Last year, and Kevin Hogan came in and took over the starting position for Stanford and led them to a Pac-12 championship and a victory in Pasadena. Alex Jackson here on the return and tries to get his way out to the 19-yard line. As we will see who plays quarterback now for Washington State, and that's a quick recovery by Austin Apodaca. He was laid out moments ago after that big hit by Kevin Anderson. He's going to tough it out and get in there with his team. Well, it's going to be all on him. At 31-3 with no running game, it's just throwing all the time. And it's for a Stanford defense, this is where you want to be. Man, you know what they're going to do. Just take off on him like that. Ben Gardner with a sack and a fumble. Ball's on the ground, but... They were quick to jump on at that time. And ben Gardner coming in. There's Ben Gardner right up top. And that is just a combination of two things. That's good get off, number one. He did a really good job of getting off in the ball. But that was just pitiful. And you're as an offensive lineman, you, you can't do that. I mean, that was Rico Forbes, number 76. He just, he never moved his feet. 
Second and 17. They will keep it on the ground this time with Laufasa. Ben Gardner, the senior defensive end for Stanford. Now, last week he had the block punt, the sack against Arizona State. He's an emotional leader of this defense. Third down and 13. Washington State and his movement up front. They have struggled all night long. You know, Ben Gardner last night led the Friday pre-dinner prayer and mentioned that he wanted to make sure that David Yankee would be proud of how hard they would play tonight. Of course, David Yankee, the All-American left guard, dealing with a personal family matter back in Georgia. And Coach Shaw stressed that David is healthy and good standing with the team. They hope to get him back tomorrow and reunite with the team. But Gardner went out of his way last night to gather the troops, say a prayer for David and his family, and try to make him proud with their effort. Third and eight. And that'll be the first third down conversion of the night as Gabe Marks gets the reception to move the chains. And Washington State, seven minutes to play in the third. And that's when they get their first third down conversion. Well, and Apodaca has time. And when he does, I mean, when, when they've had time to throw down the field, They've done pretty well. Marks has been able to get open. There's been some guys who are open. They've had some drops, like we've mentioned a few times, but the whole key is with this offensive line. This defensive front of Stanford is just is better than the offensive front right now of this uh, Washington State team. Look at this. Trent Murphy. Wow. Point blank, and he takes it home. So he knocks the starting quarterback out. And then puts a body blow right to the midsection of Washington State with that pick six. Stanford is just awesome tonight. And so is Murphy. Top of the day to your line here, Mr. Murphy. You can see him right up here. Number 93. Gets his hands up and just look at this. He's waiting, anticipating. And the ball, not as high as he had anticipated, is able to, heck, he just picked it off. Trent Murphy, six foot six. He's got that long, rangy body, and he just went up and snagged this pass that Apodaca threw right at him. Trent Murphy is probably the toughest guy on this team. He's one of those guys that nobody wants to mess with. When he says something, he means it. His word is straight truth. <laughs> And every and he's one of those guys that everybody if they get into something on the field they're like uh, you know, okay Murphy. I, I think say. you could sum it up this way. You know when the media relations guys go around say all right what are your hobbies what do you like we need to fill out your bio. He says well when I go back home to Arizona I enjoy steer wrestling. Well his pop has a farm. Yep. And that's, <laughs> and that's what he and you know he says he says when his dad says something he <laughs> listens to every word. I like that kid. Nonstop preparation all off season and then he gets the results like that 38 to 3 number 5 Stanford test Murph is one of those guys when you watch him he plays hard he plays physical he'll play on Sundays and he's gonna play better than people think he's got he's rangy like you said he runs better than you think he's got great toughness This Stanford defense, you know, we've told you about the streak of takeaways, the longest in the nation. And tonight, two pick six returns. This will go for a touchback. Here at the Seattle game, and Century Link Field. There's Stanford with a couple of guys that made their way to the pros and cashing paychecks right here in Seattle. But Baldwin's doing the same thing in the NFL as he did here. And how about Richard Sherman, one of the best corners in the league? Oh, he's he's playing lights out. That's 
That's as good as there is in the league right now. Richard Sherman plays the run well, plays the pass well, and he'll let you know it too. Oh, Sinapadaka's got to go back out there. Took the big hit from Kevin Anderson. And Trent Murphy just picked six them. And this time he throws it to the inside, but somehow Leon Brooks comes up with it. Just a yard and a half there as he was covered by Ronnie Harris. There he is. He has played extremely well. There's Baldwin. Baldwin's made some big plays also. That Seattle team is playing Reno. as well as anybody in the league right now. They're at the Texans on Sunday. They're the number one defense in the league. And they are going to say that is incomplete as it was juggled by Vince Maley and did hit the turf. Of course, Russell Wilson, how productive he has been, is one of the you know, one of the real steals in recent years in terms of stock price going into an NFL draft and what you got on the back end with instant results as the rain continues to come down. You see the the honors that the Seahawks have put together with the championship banners through the years, and this is a team capable of winning it all here in Seattle this year. Third down and eight, and that was in stride to John Thompson, but incomplete as it was Zach Hawk power slapping it away there at the last moment because that's the fourth drop that I've counted there may have been more but the fourth drop this one this one's a big play and they're I mean there's just no excuse for that on any level the doctor thinks he's got himself a complete yeah he started that little quarterback jog that you'll see <laughs> with a completion there is the punt away from Bolin and you get the mock derision <laughs> applause from the crowd because he has struggled with some of his punts lately. Stanford of course could be on a collision course in the Pac-12 with Oregon but they got a tough one next week with Washington and you look at the top of the Pac-12 North you look at the conference overall now I mean people are making the argument that the Pac-12 is you know closing that gap to the SEC which I think is a very sound argument. But the talent in this side alone, Pac-12 North, I know Oregon State stumbled early. They're playing good ball now. Then you got two legitimate national title contenders in both Oregon and Stanford. And the upstarts here in this city with the Washington Huskies. Anthony Wilkerson now. And he cuts back to the 38-yard line, tackled by Nota. They like Wilkerson, 32. I think he's he's got pretty good size, has good movement, runs behind his pads well. If I'm sitting at home right now, I'm staying up for one reason and one reason only. I want to watch Barry Sanders. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, it amazed me. He he looked exactly like his pop. For now, we get Anthony Wilkerson as the tailback here. Stanford easily in control as Wilkerson stiff arms his way for just a yard as he was quick to get out to DeMonte Horton with that stiff arm. We have a player down on the top side, Washington State player. Jordan Richards, maybe. You see Wilkerson with the stiff arm that time against DeMonte Horton. Oh, DeMonte Horton. And that is. He's being intended to land there on the turf at the 36 yard line. You know, the Stanford team, and you think about the evolution and how they've arrived at the point that they have as a consistent title contender. And, you know, Jim Harbaugh really started it, the foundation of it. And here they are with David Shaw coming off a Rose Bowl championship and sitting there getting all the preseason accolades of being placed where they are top five team in the country had a chance to have a discussion with Rod Gilmore who obviously stays close to the program our colleague played at Stanford he talked about the turnaround and how they've arrived at that in 2007 Harbaugh took over Stanford the 16 and 40 in the previous five seasons they had the 12 win season made it to the Orange Bowl in 2012 Andrew Luck the success of 2011 and 2010 Shaw taking over and leading them to back to back BCS polls and we'll talk more about the growth and development of this. I want to get your opinion on this. Third and three here for Stanford. 
as Hogan's going to try to run it himself and he's going to be close depending on the mark here for a first down. But Rod said the most overlooked part of everything is that Shaw's been able to pick up more talent once Harbaugh developed the offensive line philosophy defensive line is they're getting more talent now with the defensive backfield real speed and defensive backfield kind of finishing off this grand project of building back Stanford football Rod said that huh? right, figure yeah. what position he's playing. Right. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's the, the talent wide receiver and defensive back speed was the point yeah because when when Jim came in he knew one thing and one thing only he needed to get more physical mission accomplished and now they've been able to continue that tradition and they've been able to add now like you said on the back end you're getting he needs more speed still he knows he still needs that but you go to Stanford right now and Tess I'm telling you I can remember looking at Stanford players on tape and they just weren't physically developed. Well, you you had one of the lines of the week when you started yeah. talking about this game, where you where you talked about what their strength used to be. <laughs> well, that was G Garen Barris, who played here at Stanford, and he said it about you know he, about, he said about himself and Stanford. He said, "Look, strength is our weakness," <laughs> which is just and, it kind of sums it up back in the day, doesn't it? Here's Wilkerson now on second and five, just about a yard there. And they would get occasionally they would you know you'd get different guys come through and they were more physical or whatever but not on the whole number 10 Washington State must leave the game for a play as a result of loss of helmet right now when you look at the Stanford team the first thing you notice is how physical they are you see it on their defensive front you see it in their offensive their offensive line and I was listening I was listening to an interview with Andrew Luck and one of the things he was saying that coach Harbaugh brought and David Shaw has continued is compete. They compete all the time in practice all the time. No pad practice whatever they compete to win constantly. And it's gotten away from a lot of programs kind of the culture of football nowadays you don't have a lot of programs even from the high school level on up the college of really going live. Yes. Going good on good and, and tackling and taking guys down to the ground. Stanford, they're they're out there pushing themselves. Our uh, our producer Steve Ackles and I had a great night the other night. We went over to uh, Coach Madden's house and oh, he had dinner. He must have enjoyed that. Uh, we we that had a great time. Let's take a look at the comparisons here, and we we showed this at the start. But listen, I'm not saying Kevin Hogan is Andrew Luck, but he's going to go to nine and zero. Andrew Luck had a different cast of characters, and Andrew Luck's one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now in his second year. Hogan's got a ways to go. Just hope that I just hope that Madden had enough food, knowing who was at his house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, his wife Virginia was nice enough to be able to to feed us, which is saying something. Trust me. You know, you get a glimpse of what Stanford can do here, and obviously in the defensive side, adding to the scoreboard here, 38-3 with the two pick sixes. But you know, you mentioned old Stanford football strength is their weakness. Right. Strength is their strength. Strength this is, is a team that right on now. both offense and defense you see the power come through and to get back to what we were talking about just in terms of uh, uh, paying attention to detail and all that type of thing. That's one of the things that coach Madden brought up uh, and said it really shows up in offensive and defensive line play and the fundamentals of the game and the fundamentals of the game is really what David Shaw is stressing and that's why they compete all the time. Number 94 of the defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. First down will be repeated. Now this is a program that's been recruiting so well in recent years, but they're also very patient. Andrew Luck and Kevin Hogan. We wait for them to develop. David Shaw knows. And, and I think we're seeing that with, you know, a guy we were so wowed with for one moment tonight, and Barry Sanders. Yeah. But you see how they'll bring guys along slowly, let them grow into it. So first and five after the penalty. Apodaca pressured. He's going to tuck it, run it, and he spins for a first down. So he was taken down by David Perry. David Shaw is really interesting, and he's going to remain very interesting to a lot of NFL teams. He's going to fight that for as long as he stays in college football. He, he was asked about it this week. Yeah, and well, he loves he loves Stanford, loves it, and he loves working with the guys. He's been at the pro game. He understands what it's all about and I know for a fact that there are a lot of teams that would love to hire David Shaw Mason is chopped down as he caught it out of the backfield that was Wayne Lyons who came in uh, David Shaw's third year 
here at Stanford. Of course, uh, see this graduate right from Stanford back in 95. See that right there, Tess? Yep. That is, that's a big deal. He understands the NFL game. And NFL general managers and owners understand that he has head coaching experience and he also understands the pro game. He is very attractive at the next level. Mason cuts back against the grain out to the 32 yard line. Shaw said this week when asked about it, he said, I plan on being here for a very Special long time. For the injured player. The third I down believe two. it. I mean, what's not to like about the situation? You're at uh, one of the most magnificent institutions in our country, beautiful area to live. You're recruiting specific to what can accomplish the task at hand. You want good, solid offensive linemen, pro-style developing quarterbacks, tight ends, hard-nosed runners. Strangely enough, the opposite of where the sport's been going in recent yeah, years, exactly. right? And he can corral these guys that need a home. On top of it, he's got guys who are pretty bright. Apodaca gonna sling it sidearmed, and that was a worm burner. As it'll be fourth down in the rain, really coming down hard now here with just over a minute to go in the third. Coach Bill Parcells, who just went into the Hall of Fame, you know, he said a long time ago, smart players make smart decisions. Not so smart players make not so smart decisions. You win with smart decisions. Now well, that's been part of the formula for Stanford in recent years. Posted a 31 and 6 record in Pac 12 play over the last four plus seasons. Bowling into punt again into this driving rain. Fielded by Whitfield as a penalty flag is thrown at the 29 yard line. Got to be a loyal fan. He's sitting through that. Kick catch interference. Number two of the kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the infraction. First down. There's Nolan Washington finding himself on special teams. Guy took over for him down at Texas A&M. has been pretty good the past year. Yeah, he's not too shabby, is he? Here's Wilkerson as he slithers his way out to the 49 yard line and then was met hard by Dale Buchanan. And we're talking about Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel's probably the most exciting player in all of college football. Number 32, football. Stanford, must leave the game for one play as a result of loss of helmet. Today, Manziel was able to get past Arkansas. Ray, Ramon Wright is in at tailback. High formation here on second and four. Could be the last play here in the third quarter as Wright made first contact and then was able to get a little extra close to that line to make. Stanford just dominating Wazoo. Fourth quarter coming up. This is the end of the third quarter. Number five, Stanford. They had two interception returns for touchdowns. Jordan Richards and Trent Murphy both taken back Washington State passes. And they have a 38 to 3 lead to start this fourth quarter. Joe Tessitor, Matt Millen, and Maria Taylor with you here in Seattle. And this was just lofted that time for Kyle Murphy. 6'7, 295 pound Kyle Murphy, who's a backup offensive guard who puts on that 94 to play a little fullback tight end and he ran like he was 290 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that would do. Uh, he's gonna get dogged and watch this watch this route that uh, not a lot of uh, not a lot of route running skill no, he's there. putting dents in the field turf with each <laughs> step there he's gonna stay in here on fourth and one and here's Wilkerson and he saw all that green to the outside and said, I will take that, thank you. First down, Cardinal. It was Taylor Taliulu 
lone man out there with Anthony Wilkerson. And plays on as the rain comes down here in Seattle. The kick out block as yes. Wilkerson wasn't even touched until he already had eight yards and was run out by Nolan Washington. And a point to be made about how Stanford closes out this game because last week they had that massive lead against Arizona State. And then at this point in the game, they let Arizona State come back in and make that score a little deceiving. Yeah, and then just watching that, Tess, I, I thought I thought Arizona State, they didn't look very good to me at all. They must have regrouped because they came back today and they're playing pretty darn well. This is Dallas Lloyd coming in at quarterback here. Ricky Seal is the running back with him. Now Seal gets the call here on second and one. We'll have a first down. Kevin Hogan, I would think Number his night would be Washington done. State must leave the game play. One play. Coke have lost of helmet. That's Daryl Monroe coming off because he lost his helmet. Kevin Hogan was 16 out of 24 for 286 yards, three touchdowns. One pick, a 66% night for him. Not a lot is really asked of Kevin Hogan in terms of the big passing yard totals so far with his nine starts now as a Stanford quarterback as he's going to move his mark to 9-0 as the starting quarterback for the Cardinal. And this time it's <laughs> Dallas Lloyd. He was met there at the 11-yard line by Dayon Buchanan. Buchanan just has a knack. I like him. For bringing it. It's Deon, just what he does. He does. Dale Buchanan, he is, some guys, you know, I've been around it a long time. Some guys just have a natural pop, and he's one of them. He is not afraid to stick his face right in the middle of it. His helmet, his chin strap came off, helmet stayed on. He's Well, Kevin Hogan's going to come in because of that. Dylan Bunnell. Another offensive lineman who plays some fullback tight end is in here. As Wilkerson gets the call. Kevin Hogan tonight. 286 yards. That's a career high. A modest career high. But once again, you know, with what Stanford attempts to do and the way they've gone about winning in all of his starts, that's all that's needed. But he strikes when necessary. Had to... Touchdown passes tonight, 57 yards, 33 yards, 45 yards. He's lethal off of play action. The best number that Kevin Hogan has is 9-0 right now as a quarterback. Third and three. And he was looking near the pile on that time. He couldn't find Jordan Pratt. Driving rain here. In Seattle as Hogan will trot off. And on will come Jordan Williamson. Remember Williamson's had an interesting career, missed the kick in the Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma State, but made the kick to beat Oregon last year. This from 27. He made from 28 earlier. And he puts it through. And Stanford's got 41 on the board against Wazoo. Isaiah Myers helping out. Gabe Marks there. Keep those hands dry. Fourth quarter, see what Marks can come up with here. <laughs> this guy, that, that, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a young Matt what Millen is, right there. What like, is he <laughs> doing, Millen? That what? is beautiful. <laughs> You got somebody, somebody get some wet naps out there. We need a cleanup in section 307. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
That's a live ball. And Jackson decides to just jump on it. Little guys are waving the flag, and this guy, he waved the flag there's, of popcorn some moments my man ago. Right there. He is my MVP he tonight. It's beautiful. I mean, he's got the still hat working. This is moments ago. <laughs> he, he wanted that popcorn, and he was going to enjoy every last kernel of that sucker. <laughs> you look got an that. oxygen tank around here? I may need uh, some. Look at, look at that. Is, that is my hero. I'm going to have to take over for Tessie's bend over laughing so hard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Apodaca. <laughs> Thank goodness it's raining for him. Yeah. Gotten there a little earlier than expected. At this point, really, what you want to see out of your Washington State team is just compete. Crowd reacting to the replay up on the big board. Yeah. That right hand yeah. there. You saw Richard Pippins on the coverage and that's what the crowd's reacting to even down 38 they still want to see it go well for him and get that call so this is incomplete on third and ten as he was Tess I don't know how many drop balls there were tonight a good amount in the first half yeah Matt. and it, it they never were able to get any kind of rhythm or consistency going and it continued in through here in the second half as well Remember through the first half, they didn't have a first down. They didn't get their first third down conversion, rather, um, till the third quarter. But I know there were two drops in the first half that would have gotten them. There's Whitfield on the return. Oh. He's got to be on sports. There show. he is. There he is. Just oh, let that rain come down. Is, Clean yourself right up. He doesn't even know it's raining. <laughs> Hogan's night is done for Stanford. Brower will come in and get some time as he tried to quickly get it out to Kelsey Young. Is that a live ball? That may have been a lateral. They're saying it's incomplete, but I don't know that that was a forward pass. Where does he release it, and where does it go to? Yeah, it's, it was it was a tad forward. Evan Crower, the junior from San Diego. Third game he's seen action in this year. And here is Ramond Wright. And this score is going to get even uglier for the Cougars. 53 yard touchdown run for Wright. They scripted a few plays for him last week against Arizona State. And he's getting time here in the fourth quarter, and he made the most of it. Well, just blocks all the way around and a missed tackle there. It's just when it rains, it pours, Tess. No pun intended on now tonight's doing, night. Yep. It's doing it in the weather, and it's doing it against this Washington State defense as well. And this was a much improved Washington State defense. But Stanford's been far too much for them. I, I like that team. The offensive line's been able to come around. It's what you're looking for. Yeah, last year they were they were so young that UW offensive line. It's Ricky Galvin on the return here for the Cougars, and Galvin gets it out 
Out to the 28-yard line. You remember last year here at Century Lane when Washington was playing Stanford here. Brent Murphy. That's familiar. Had the interception return then, just like he did tonight. It's 13 to 3 Stanford, but then Bishop Sankey. Final play of the third quarter, the 61 yard touchdown run, Casey Williams. But this on the board was 17 13 as Washington upset then number eight Stanford. So, come next week, that's going to be a very attractive matchup of unbeatens. As Noah Fassa gets the call here for Washington State, how do you see it, Washington and Stanford next Saturday night? Well, it's you know the good thing is it's strength versus strength, which I really I love those games. So if you look at this thing on paper now, on paper, you'd say if Stanford plays their best game and Washington plays their best game, it's a push. And they'll be Stanford is going to be favored, but. Washington what I don't really know yet is how well Washington's defense can play against this Stanford offense Austin Apodaca runs ahead for a first down remember he was injured earlier tonight and came back in I'll tell you this though test about that game Steve Sarkeesian is an outstanding play caller sure is just He's, got that natural feel yep and let me tell you something about play callers you either have it or you don't it's 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 an eight and it's not what you've written down or it's not how you've broken it down it's game time and it's a feel and the great play callers have a great feel and Sarkeesian's got it. Apodaca to pass here on first down and he quickly gets it to Gabe Marks. There's Shane Scove the senior who's taken such a circuitous route to arrive at this point of his Senior year. This is hometown as Guadalajara, Mexico, because prior to high school, he spent many years down there. His mother, who is dealing with multiple sclerosis, they moved down there so she could receive the proper and cheaper medical care. They keep it on the ground with Fusa. And then Scove moved back to California where he got himself into trouble as a teenager. He was actually kicked off of his high school football team. And Pete Thamel in Sports Illustrated wrote a feature piece on him where Shane's dad detailed sending him to boarding school in upstate New York to Trinity Pauling. He said that turned his life around, turned him into a Stanford student. And then at Stanford had the brutal leg injury in 2011 and then was arrested for DUI in 2012 and now has straightened himself out again here to put forth what could be a very special senior season. That was overthrown as the intended target was Bobby Ratliff. But Scove's a guy that you really respect what he is as yeah. a player on the field. Yeah, the thing about Shane Scove and the quality that he has that's rare is he makes people around him better. And that is that is really a rare quality. When you have one of those guys, you don't really appreciate them until after they're gone. And they go, well, how did we handle it last year? How did how do we do this? Scove's the answer. And so he makes his team, he lifts this team, and he's the leader of this group also. Apodaca pulls it back down as this is going to be sent out. And just to wrap things up on Scove, you know, his father, in that long feature piece that I referenced, said that there was a point in his teenage years when things were going south. He was kicked off his high school football team back in California. He said he sent his kid to boarding school really as an act of desperation. Mm. So he got a second chance in life, became a great student and student athlete, and is having great success at Stanford. Third down and 10 now for Papadaka and the Poots. And wide open that time, the flag is down as Gabe Marks makes a really nice move and sprints his way right into the end zone. But we will check on the flag all the way back at the 49 yard line to see if this stands up for now a 47 yard touchdown catch by oh. Gabe Marks. Go Offside. Number 94 the defense was in the neutral zone at the snap. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. So the fourth touchdown catch of the year for the talented sophomore Gabe Marks.
Tess, I got to tell you, just watching the Stanford team last week against Arizona State, I watched that film and I said, man, Arizona State's got a long way to go. And they are just all over USC tonight. That kick was out, so it'll be marked up after the penalty flag for David Shaw's team. So, to your point, Arizona State, who beat Wisconsin, controversy there, I mean, just dominating USC right now as, as that game's being Ball played. This, this Stanford team, team Stanford absolutely came play play out of the game and dominated for three quarters of play before garbage time. Arizona State oh, just yeah. closed the lead. They, now they they're doing this to Washington State. I'll tell you who played really well against Arizona State was David Yankee, their left guard. Their All-American guard. He played an extremely good game. And he's expected to rejoin his Stanford teammates tomorrow as Coach Shaw wanted everybody to know that David is healthy and in good standing with the team. He's just dealing with some personal family matter back home in Georgia. And you've been waiting for this moment, yeah. Matt. With 8.24 to go, that is Barry Sanders' son now in at tailback for Stanford. I remember when Barry Full Sanders start. burst Number on the scene. of the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. At Oklahoma State. I'll show you we what happened in the first half of this game 24. when Sanders came in. Watch this move. Now, if this isn't his dad, nothing. Look at this. Well, look right, at the reaction. Right here, right? Well, he had two jukes. <laughs> there, right there, right at the end. That was Barry. That was his father. That little 16 yard reception got everybody's attention. Now he'll get some playing time here in the fourth quarter. Here's Barry Sanders. Of course, dad. With that magical season, really the gold standard of Heisman seasons back in 1988. 42 rushing touchdowns. And then over 15,000 yards in the NFL. Matt, you, you talk about Barry as the best you've ever seen. Oh. Why was he the best you've ever he had seen? To, he had great vision. He had more moves that he didn't even know what he, I mean, he just reacted. The, the greatest reactionary runner I've ever seen. Tremendous balance, great speed. He, he just had it all. You know, I, I called the game one time in Detroit, and he made a move that was, you know, became standard for him. And I said, when God made Barry Sanders, even he didn't know what he did. And and you know what? I I, I may have been true uh, truthful there. That was I've just never seen a guy like him. Third and three for Stan for Stanford as, as a pure runner, Tess, the best I've ever seen. Evan Crower is the quarterback replacing Kevin Hogan here. Sanders flanking him. And he will get rid of it for a first down to Young. Kelsey Young, who cuts back, and Kelsey Young with a foot race inside the 25, down to the 23, tackled by Tana Pritchard. Tana Pritchard, the younger brother of Stanford assistant coach Tavita Pritchard, who, of course, played quarterback at Stanford, and Pritchard family from the state of Washington here. Tess, I'm going to show you something. See this Barry Sanders, number 26? If you're going to play, you've got to be able to stand in there. Good now, let me tell you something about that was good protection. When we played his father, the rule was if he stayed in the block, take the take, hit him as hard as you could, because <laughs> that's the only time you're going to get a hit on him. Doesn't have the ball. And here goes Barry Sanders for the score. A 22 yard touchdown run by Sanders. Well, going to be a bright future on the farm for that young man. Well, his dad's smiling right now. This is nice. Bounce it to the outside. He had time to look in the rearview mirror there, Matt. Yeah, he did. Now, if he's really like his dad, to go over, sit in the sidelines, and fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> First collegiate touchdown by Sanders. Uprapina, the backup place kicker, came in to hit that extra point. You know, Tyler Gaffney and Anthony Wilkerson in the backfield for now, but the future is bright with Sanders. 
You know, the two senior tailbacks who do so much for this offense, but come next year, it's going to be something to watch what he can do. Just they're, they're a likable guy, and you want them to do well. And and then when they do well, you feel real. That's that. That's Barry Sanders Jr. right there. You can just see it by is. the way guys react whole, to him on the sideline. The whole team. Yeah, that's good to see. 55 to 10, Stanford. Let's go down to the field to Maria Taylor. Yeah, you can tell that Sanders is really loved on this team. As soon as he comes off, all of his teammates, we knew you had it in you. Great run. So asking for another one, guys. 629 left on the <laughs> clock. We'll see what he can do. He may, Maria, may get that chance for another one. Yeah, we were at practice the other day, and they were all talking about him. They said, wait till you see him. And, and to your point, what you said earlier, that David Shaw wants to be he wants, he wants him to come along the right way and he wants to be patient with him and he wants him to be you know a f fully operational when he does go Ricky Galvin on the return for Washington State and he weaves his way out to the 30 yard line now they got the cameras working everything you get your first college touchdown we got 55 10 here Oregon's up on Cal 55 to 10 as well. There's Apodaca now as he just throws it away. If everything stays the course, and listen, there's a lot that happens between now and November 7th. Next week, Stanford has Washington. Then October 19th, they got UCLA. No grounding. The ball was thrown and beyond the line of scrimmage by a quarterback outside the pocket. But if Stanford can take care of business, and like we said, still hurdles to overcome, November 7th, it's going to be. Stanford against Oregon down there in Palo Alto. Apodaca on second and ten. As that falls to the ground as it was tipped as he was looking for Isaiah Myers, but it falls incomplete. UCLA has got a good football team as well. You sure do. Brent Hunley playing great at quarterback. That's a team that's playing inspired ball in the wake of the tragedy that that family had to suffer through with the loss of Nick Pasquale. Right. Jim Mora has done a fantastic job down there. The pass was intended for River Craycraft. They will punt away here. And Barry Sanders is back on punt return. Hey, get another look at him here, Matt. See what he can do in special teams. And this punt is driven, and he's going to call for the fair catch at the 26 yard line. You know, Dad was something on special teams. Oh. When Thurman Thomas was Off the starting the running back at Oklahoma State. He kind of started to break through with his kickoff return. I'll tell you a Barry Sanders story. We were watching Barry Sanders in 88, I believe, was his Heisman Trophy. It was. And Barry Sanders is just tearing, tearing college football up. I mean, he is, he's doing all those moves and he's special team, whatever you ask him to do, he's tearing it up. And we're sitting in, in in the NFL and we're going he can't do that at this level <laughs> yeah, there's no sure. way and so the very first game he has in Detroit he comes in he held out and the very first game he comes in they, they hand him the ball and he does one of those patented Barry Sanders runs and we're sitting here watching this the game and we're going oh my god did you just see what no. I just saw think it about the coming years here with the stock loaded talent and offensive line for Stanford mm -hmm. and knowing what they're committed to offensively and their philosophy what an ideal situation for the next few years of his college career this is Ricky seal who's getting some extended playing time here with this lopsided score 
as we will come upon the five minute mark. Tess, as you as you know, I'm I'm a very big tape guy. I'm in film. That's I an love, understatement. Yeah, I love to watch film. And um, and I was the same way as a player. And there were two players that when you put the tape on, and I followed them, you know, I watched guys come in the league, you know what they want to do, and I'd put tape on. The first guy, there were two guys that I thought were the greatest that I've ever seen at their positions. The one was Barry Sanders, where I had to call guys in and say, you, you won't believe what I just saw watching this tape. And the other one was Lawrence Taylor, who I thought was the greatest player to ever play our game. Lawrence Taylor. It's hard to argue otherwise yeah, with those was, two names you just mentioned. Well, Lawrence Taylor changed the way the games played. Really Lawrence, did. Lawrence Taylor was phenomenal when he was at North Carolina. When he came to the National Football League, he was just, I can remember saying to Howie Long, you need to come in here and look at this. You won't believe what this guy puts on tape. Same thing with Barry Sanders. Ben Ryan on to punt. And Leon Brooks was taken down right away. Reminder that Sports Center will be coming up favoring that left leg. I hope he's all right. That's a, that's a good looking young player. Been a real standout for defensive coordinator Mike Bresky. Bobby Ratliff able to take it out to the 27 yard line. Austin Apodaca was pressed into service when Connor Holiday received a big hit from Trent Murphy on a ball that ended up being returned for a touchdown, interception return for a touchdown by Jordan Richards. Apodaca 7 of 20 for 75 yards did have the touchdown pass to Gabe Marks. Going to take a shot downfield. Good coverage that time and it should have been intercepted by Kyle Olabode. As they tend to Brown on the sideline. This ball was caught by Ricky Galvin. For a first down for Washington State. Galvin's played some running back in his career. Has that build at 5'8, 178 pounds. This is Craycraft. And he goes ahead for nine yards out close to the 45 yard line. Well with Halliday down Apodaca this is this is good for Apodaca. He's going to see a couple you know he'll see the some live bullets he will be able to use it. The more reps you can get the better for a young quarterback. And the red shirt freshman get himself into a rhythm here as he finds Dom Williams. A Stanford player down. That is Wafor, Akina Wafor, the backup defensive tackle. He has seen limited action in the first few games this season. Start looking through both the offensive and defensive front for Stanford, and it's filled with all these. Big prototype NFL body kind of guys that have been gravitating towards this program and what they're committed to up front on both sides of the ball. You know, Stanford is a they recruit nationally. They they're all over the place, and um, what they have to offer is unique. And obviously, you're playing this this type of football in the Pac-12. 
And you, the kind of kid you have to recruit to be able to get into that school is an Ivy League type. Sure is. First and foremost, as this is Mason out of the backfield. David Shaw will tell you, listen, we're going for outstanding football players. Big, strong, powerful football players. We have to have guys who can handle the academics and understand the culture of Stanford. And that is a small pool nationally. So they have to recruit nationally. And then they went tough guys. They want toughness. And that has shown up throughout the oh, roster. Yeah. And I, I think that was really accentuated when, when Coach Harbaugh showed up. But really, the guy that they attribute a lot of that to that Coach Harbaugh brought in was Toby Gerhardt. That was the one that they said he kind of personified all that they were looking to have here at Stanford. Toby Gerhardt, the Heisman runner-up. Of course, they're used to Heisman runner-ups in recent years. And Gerhardt, and then a couple years of Andrew Luck. John you know, first Elway down. was a Heisman runner. Yeah. Up. They have Jim one Heisman. Plunkin, of course, is the only Heisman winner back in 1970. 1970. They've had some serious talent come through the farm in their great grand football history. But this modern era, you know, it's funny because they really have changed the way they go about it. It used to be a kind of a entertaining, pass happy right. team um, that could bring about some inconsistencies. This mold and how they have built this program, they're consistent. Yeah, they are. They are very consistent. And they still get good quarterbacks. You know, Jim Plunkett, Jim Plunkett, when he came out of Stanford, was an absolute stud. And they sent him up to New England. He was the number one pick overall taken. Went to the New England Patriots. They put in a triple option, and they mauled that poor guy. And had he not, yeah. and he, he went from there to San Francisco, he got cut, was taken to the, to the Oakland Raiders. And had he been taken by the Oakland Raiders as a rookie, we would be saying about every quarterback that came through, that guy could be the next Jim Plunkett. That's how good he was. Final minute here in Seattle. Oh, what a night for the Cardinal. Now Fossa. Down inside the nine yard line. Stops the clock with 39 seconds remaining. And Kevin Hogan, who just did what he's always done starts a game, wins a game. <laughs> yeah. 9 0 now. That personal high starting 286 yards tonight. East Coast guy doing the West Coast thing. Comes from Northern Virginia, played his high school ball in Washington as Apodaca looking to extend this play, throws it to the end zone, and that is a touchdown to Ricky Galvin. I wonder how our popcorn guy's doing. I wonder if he's cheering for Wazoo right now. He had a Wazoo sign on his hand, I think. Mascaris here. And then Apodaca has come in, throwing a couple touchdown passes. And as Washington State, in such an uphill battle when this third quarter came around, it was a 17 3 game at the half, and then the two pick sixes by the Cardinal Mettenberger. Came up in that area, was part of that program, and then Rick had to make a very difficult decision for him to exit that program. Ends up at LSU, comes back, and it was a thriller between those two. Sports Center will have all the coverage. Guys from game day were there. It's a fun morning, and all the post game coverage will be coming your way as Kelsey Young returns it out. And this Stanford team is going to have a showdown with an undefeated Washington Husky squad coming up next week and his defense will be primed for Keith Price and Steve Sarkeesian's offense David Shaw at power game will be matched up against Washington next week
as the victory formation has arrived for the Cardinal. Twelfth straight win for Stanford. That's the second best overall winning streak in the country. Our final score, 55 to 17. Number five, Stanford, now 4-0. For Matt Maria, I'm Joe Tessitore. Enjoy the rest of your night, including Sports Center, right now.